playing defensive back, senior, six foot two, 220 pounds, number three, Logan Scott. Playing defensive back, senior, five foot nine, 155 pounds, number nine, Lydon Blackman. And playing defensive back, sophomore, five foot 11, 179 pounds, number 36, Tazon Mason. And playing defensive back, senior, five foot nine, 155 pounds, number one, Kamani McNeil. Now the starting offense for your Perry Panthers. Playing tackle, junior, six foot two, 295 pounds, number 74, Briar Reckonwall. Playing tackle, freshman, six foot tall, 235 pounds, number 78, Mike Millen. Playing guard, senior, six foot one, 275 pounds, number 75, Vinny Hildebrand. Playing guard, senior, six foot two, 225 pounds, number 77, Justin Maddox. Playing center, senior, six foot tall, 295 pounds, number 60, Andrew Bollum. Playing tight end, senior, six foot tall, 200 pounds, number 34, Ralph Scott. Playing running back, senior, five foot eight, 170 pounds, number 14, Sam Thompson. Playing running back, junior, five foot eight, 180 pounds, number 22, DeAndre Church. Playing running back, sophomore, six foot tall, 210 pounds, number 25, Ryder Hartstrom. And playing wide receiver, senior, five foot 11, 180 pounds, number 17, Cameron Gill. And playing quarterback, sophomore, five foot 10, 160 pounds, number three, Carson Basham. Good evening. During the past year, our football family lost two wonderful men who our players called dad. Dewey Young, father of Weston, and Brian Best, father of Zach. We miss them terribly, but we all know that they are looking down at these fine young men and are very proud of their accomplishments. We want to thank our football family and Perry community for the support these young men have received. Now we'd like to recognize our seniors. First off, number four, Nick Hoagland, son of Angel Moore and Tim Hoagland. His favorite football memory is winning the Federal League Championship junior year. His most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakefield and Coach Slates is to hold the rope for your brother. His plans after graduation is to go to work. Message of thanks to his loved ones, he wants to thank his dad for teaching him how to play at a young age and thank his mom and dad both for sacrificing their time and money to support him playing football since he was seven. Uh, number four, Nick Hoagland. Number six, Joe Schweitzer, son of Greg and Amy. His favorite football memory was beating McKinley last year and Coach Wake singing to him after the game. His most valuable lesson learned from coaches Wakefield and Slates is he learned that being a part of this program is the importance of your attitude and effort. If you give 110%, the pieces will fall in place. His plans after graduation is to go to Kent State University. He'd like to thank his mom, dad, grandma, sister, and brothers for always believing in him and supporting him throughout everything. Joe Schweitzer. Number 11, Cameron Hall, son of Deborah and Brian Hall. His favorite... Memory is beating Olin Tangy in the playoffs his junior year. His most valuable lessons from Coach Wake and Coach Slates is one of the most honorable gestures in life is when teammates hold a rope for you and you hold it for them. He plans after graduation to attend Stark State and getting certified in heating and cooling. 
He wants to thank his mom, his dad, his grandma, along with his brother and sister for supporting him during his football career. He says he loves you all. Cameron Hall. Number 12, Skylar Ristov, son of Steve and Christy Ristov. His favorite football memory is Coach Wake singing after he beat McKinley for the Federal League title. His most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wake and Slates is he's learned that what it's like to face adversity and push through it and never let it hold him back or never give up. After graduation, he plans on joining the Navy. He wants to thank his mom and dad for making him the man he is today and pushing him to always be better, not only in sports, but school and life in general. He wouldn't be who he is today without them, and, and he will be forever grateful. Skyler Ristov. Number 14, Sam Thompson, son of Jane Little and Robert Thompson. His favorite football memory is when Coach Wakefield sang after the McKinley game last year. His most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakefield and Coach Slates is everything in life happens for a reason. But when family and your brothers, you will be able to get through it and never be alone. After graduation, he would love to continue football, major in marketing and minor in finance in real estate. He would like to thank all his loved ones for everything they've done so much for him and his family for being his rock and just his community welcomed him with open arms and really made him feel like a second home. He made him the man you are today and could be more grateful for everyone. Sam Thompson. Aiden Ellis, number 15, son of Lisa and Matt Ellis. His favorite football memory is listening to Coach Wake sing in the locker room after beating McKinley and honoring McGuire Deering in last year's senior hit. His most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakeville's slates is learning that attitude and effort will always beat skill and learning the importance of family. After graduation, he plans to attend the Ohio State University to earn a degree in political science, economics, and pre-law. He would like to thank his parents for being his rock. Thank you to Uncle Don for being his biggest fan. And shout out to the jungle for being the best student section in the Federal League. Love you guys. Aiden Ellis. Number 17, Cameron Gill, son of Eric and Elizabeth Gill, escorted by parents Eric and Liz Gill and sisters Aaliyah and Haley. His favorite football memory is scoring his first touchdown and beating McKinley at Tom Benson Stadium. His most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakefield and Coach Slates is to fight through ad adversity for the man beside you and to never give up. After graduation, he plans on attending college to become a teacher and a coach. He would like to thank his parents. Thank you for always being there and encouraging me to do my best. Without your love and support, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Cameron Gill. Number 18, Gavin Turner, son of Bill and Danielle Turner. His favorite football memory is running people over in the Oklahoma drill. His most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakefield's slates is to pour the rock. Plans after graduation is to get a job in construction and make some money. His message of thanks to his loved ones, he'd like to thank his number one fan, Dana Wiley Jr. Gavin Turner. Number 21, John Ruiz, son of Maria Lopez and Raymond Luiz. Favorite football memories, Coach Wakefield singing in the locker room after beating McKinley last year. Everyone tried to clap on beat to his singing, but we were all off. Most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakefield and Slates is you can't do things nervous because it'll always come out better if you're confident. Plans after graduation is to go to college and study to be an engineer. He wanted to say thank you to his loved ones for always having his back and always being giving him motivation. It's what has kept him going and it'll keep him going in his future. John Ruiz. Number 31, Cameron Nixon, uh, son of Karina Thompson and Eric Nixon. His favorite football memory was Wakefield singing to them after the win against McKinley. His most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakefield and Slates is to give your best at all times because you never know when it's your last time doing anything. Plans after graduation is to study psychology at Cleveland State University. Message to his loved ones, he wants to thank you all and to all his classmates and friends who supported me since he started at Perry and his family who has supported him since day one. Cameron Nixon. Number 34, Ralph Scott, 
son of Heather and Ralph Scott. His favorite football memory is Coach Wake singing after they beat McKinley last season. It's the most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakefield to Slates is Coach Slates taught me never to give up no matter how hard something is. His plans after graduation is to go into the workforce. His message of thanks to his loved ones, he wants to thank his family for supporting him in athletics, his dad for pushing him to be his, the best young man he could be, Ralph Scott. Number 38, Alan Emerson at Vandeborn, a son of Loretta Vandeborn and Tim Vandeborn and Kerry Emmerich. His favorite football memory is having his shoulder pads backwards for a game. His most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakefield and Slates is the most valuable lesson he's learned is to help his brothers and be a team player. After graduation, he plans to attend Florida College and then follow in his parents' footsteps of going into the military. His message of thanks to his loved ones is his gratitude is unparalleled to any amount as to how thankful I am for the continued encouragement and support for this season. Alan Emerson of Andeborn. Number 53, Jonathan Betts, son of Michael and Elizabeth Robinette, accompanied by brothers Jack and David and sister Lily. His favorite football memory happened when we were watching film. We were a few weeks into his sophomore season and I was playing on the scout team. The room was near silent and Coach Slate said, Dylan, Dylan. Then he said, Betts. I didn't respond at first because Dylan wasn't my name. The entire season he thought my name was Dylan and not John. I thought it was a pretty funny memory and it stuck with me ever since. His most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wagan Slates is how to work hard and how to fight through tough times. After graduation, he plans to go to the University of Akron for mechanical engineering. His message of thanks to his loved ones is thank you all and to all the coaches and family members who have helped shape me into the person I am. Thank you to all my brothers. Jonathan Betts. Number 60, Andrew Bolum, son of Andy and Kristen Bolum. His favorite football memory is winning the Federal League Championship last season and getting to play the game of football with the people he's grown up with. His most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakefield and Slates is you can always give more and to always trust in your teammates. He's undecided on what to do after graduation, and he has messages of thanks. He wants to thank his parents and grandparents for everything that you do for me. That's Andrew Bolum. Number 67, Baden Strang, uh, son of Carla Patterson. Uh, his favorite football memory is winning their first game against East. His most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakeville Slates is that in life, you can't do everything on your own and you have to depend on others. Plans after graduation is to go to college and get a degree in political science. His message of thanks is he wants to thank everyone for always supporting him. Baden Strang. Number 72, Weston Young, son of Dewey and Lisa Young. Weston is being escorted by his mother, Lisa, and his grandmother, Jan Young. His favorite football memory is Coach Wakefield singing to him after the games. His most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakefield and Slates is to always be supportive of each other. His plans after graduation is to go into workforce and pursue a degree in business. Message of thanks to his loved ones is Weston and Lisa would like to thank their football family, friends, and the Perry community for their kindness and loving support. One more shout out to Dewey. Dewey, your headlights are on. And may they forever... May they forever shine bright. Excuse me. Number 75, Vinny Hildebrand, son of Bill and Carrie Hildebrand. His favorite football memory is winning the Federal League outright and watching film on Saturdays with his dad and, and Mr. Carr. His most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakefield and Slates, don't dwell on the past and move forward. Plans after graduation is going to college and play football and major in exercise science. His message of thanks to his loved ones, he wants to thank his family for pushing me to be better than I ever could have imagined. And thank you to my grand, Grandma Sherio, Grandpa Frank, and Grandpa Mike. They are my inspiration to give my best effort every time I step onto the field. Uh, Vinny Hildebrand. Number 77, Justin Maddox, son of James and Teresa Maddox. 
His favorite football memory is when Coach Wakefield said, old people who played at Maslin mow their grass in their letterman's jackets. <laughs> his, most, his most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakefield Slates is to hold the rope and not let the guys beside you down. Plans after graduation is majoring in biology and going to med school to become a pediatrician at college is undecided. Thanks to your loved ones. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for always pushing me to be better. Thank you, Dad, for making me the man I am today. And thank you, Mom, for always being by my side. I couldn't ask for better parents. I love you, Mom and Dad, and I always will. Justin Maddox. Number 83, Joseph Ernest Vance, Jr., son of Annette Stam and Joseph Vance. His favorite football memory is falling down in effort drill. His most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakefield and Slays is to finish and give it all I got. His plans after graduation is to go into the trucking business. His message of thanks to his loved ones. He'd like his mom and dad and family. Thank you for always being there for me and believing in me. Joseph Ernest Vance, Jr. Number 84, Zach Best. Son of Amy and Brian Best, escorted by Rick Smith, Zach's uncle. His favorite football memory is when Coach Wake was slinging, singing in the locker room after the McKinley game his junior year. The most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakefield is place, always do your best for the guy beside you and always give it your all every play and don't give up. Plans after graduation is to go to college and study sports medicine. He, his message of thanks, he would like to thank you for always coming out and supporting me with everything I do. I couldn't be more thankful to my family and always be there for me. Zach Best. Number 85, Devin Morris, son of Angel and Michael Morris. His favorite football memory is Wakefield singing in the McKinley game last year. The most valuable lesson learned from Coach Wakefield is late. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Plans after graduation is to attend college. Message of thanks to his loved ones. Thank you for being at all my games and supporting me in no matter what. Devin Morris. Our first senior cheerleader is Taylor Bradford, varsity football and competitive cheer captain, escorted by her mom, dad, Melissa, and Dave Rudder. Also by her sister, Grace Rudder, and niece, Cameron Rudder. Her college plans are attending University of Akron to pursue a criminal justice degree and plans to cheer for Akron's game day and competitive cheer teams. She's currently involved in a small animal science career tech program. Taylor has been involved in Perry's game day and competitive cheer for six years. Her favorite cheer memory is during her sophomore and junior years placing fourth at States. She would like to give a special thanks to her mom and dad for the constant love and support through all of her years cheering and competing. She loves you both with all her heart. Taylor Bradford. Senior cheerleader is Sheldon Doherty, competitive competition cheer captain, escorted by her parents Scott and Stacy Doherty. Sheldon plans on attending Kent State University in the fall and will enter into their nursing program. Sheldon plans on becoming a traveling nurse. She is currently involved in Perry's medical career tech program. She's a member of National Technical Society and a member of the Athlete, Athletic Student Council her freshman year. She ran track and cross country through her junior year and returned to cheer her senior year. She has cheered three years for Perry's game day and competition teams. She would like to thank her parents for always making sure she has everything she needs in order to be successful. Sheldon Doherty. Third senior cheerleader, Ava Diatoli, escorted by her parents, Sean and Wendy Diatoli. Ava's plans are to attend real estate school and receive her real estate license. She has cheered for Perry's game day team for six years and competition team for three years. She is involved in Perry's college prep education track. Ava has always strived to do her best in school to maintain good grades throughout high school in order to be involved in cheer. Her favorite cheer memory was when she made varsity during her junior year. Ava would like to give a special thanks to her mom, dad, and Nana for all the love and support in everything she does. Ava Diatoli. Four senior cheerleader is Sydney Forshone, varsity football and competition cheer captain, escorted by her parents Sharon and Marcus Forshone. Sydney plans to attend Kent State University to pursue a degree in business and marketing. She's involved in Perry's College Prep educational track. Sydney is a member of the Art Club, Interact Club, Yearbook Publication, and completed junior med tech. 
her academic accomplishments are qualifying for academic honors the past three years and is an eligible candidate for National Honor Society. She also was awarded All-American at UCA camp. She has cheered six years for Perry's game day and competition teams. Sydney's favorite cheer memory is running the Perry flags across the football field and Coach Dietz one-liners and her favorite being You Go Girl. Sydney would like to first and foremost thank her mom and dad for always supporting and pushing her to be the best version of herself. She would also like to thank her coaches for all they do and the team for believing in her. Lastly, a special thanks to Mr. Brown, Coach Dietz, and Mr. Leone for one last memorable football season. Sydney Porcion. Fifth senior is Kayla Griffin, escorted by her mother, Amy Whitmer, along with Kurt Whitmer and Thomas Gardner. Kayla plans to attend college majoring in business. She's involved in Perry's band program, 6th through 10th grade. She has cheered for four years in Perry's game day team and three years for competition team. Kayla's favorite cheer memory is winning the Federal League Cheer Championship in her 8th grade competition season. Her academic accomplishments are being on the honor roll her whole high school career. She would like to give a special thanks to her mom for always being her number one supporter in all that she does and for pushing her to be the best version of herself. Kayla Griffin. Sixth senior cheerleader is Ava Cleave, escorted by her mother, Mary Miller, and her father, Kevin Cleave. She plans to attend college majoring in nursing and is undecided on a school. She's involved in Perry's College Prep educational track. Completed junior med tech and is currently taking AP and CCP classes along with her academic accomplishments of receiving a three-year academic achievement award and being an eligible candidate for National Honor Society. Ava was on the gymnastics team last year and has cheered five years for Perry's game day team and three years for the competition team. Her favorite cheer memory was sophomore year when Kay, Jordan, and her were stranded in the snow because Eric's car broke down. Then they had to drive home in an Uber with no heat in a snowstorm. She would like to give a special thanks to her family for always pushing her to do her best and supporting her through everything she does. Ava Cleave. Our seventh senior cheerleader is Abby Logan, a varsity football cheer captain, escorted by her parents, John and Cindy Logan. She plans to attend Kent State University to study graphic design. She's involved in Perry's College Prep educational track. Abby is also a member of Art Club, Interact Club, and Yearbook Publications junior and senior year. Academic accomplishments are being awarded senior educate, editor for the yearbook publication, gifted in studio art, and taking college art classes. She has cheered six years for Perry's game day team and five years for competition. Her favorite cheer memory is taking fourth place in the state cheer championship in Columbus freshman year. She would like to give a special thanks to her coach, Leanne Dietz and Nicole Warner for always believing in her and pushing her to do her best. She would also like to thank her parents for all the kindness and generosity over the years. She would like to thank them for teaching her to become a good teammate, friend, and hard worker. Thank you for being my rock. I love you guys. Abby Logan. Eighth cheer, senior cheerleader is Caitlin Long, a varsity football cheer captain, escorted by her mother, Tammy Long, and father, John Long. She plans to attend the University of Akron, majoring in nursing and eventually obtaining her master's degree. She's involved in Perry's Medical Tech Career Program, HOSA, National Honor Society, National Technical Honor Society, and Interact Club. Caitlin has danced since she was three and danced competitively since she was eight and cannot remember when dance wasn't part of her life. Her favorite cheer memory is winning an All-American Award both years at UCA Cheer Camp and cheering under the Friday Night Lights with her best friends. Also being invited to try out for UCA staff. Caitlin would like to thank her mom for always being there to support her at games and competitions and all the sacrifices she has made to give her the incredible life she lives. She would also like to thank her dad for flying in to support her tonight. Her siblings, her lifelong best friends, you know who you are. Her boyfriend, Will, dance teachers and coaches. She does not know where she would be without the impact of each of them has had on her life. Caitlin Long. Senior cheerleader, Kay Parrish, escorted by her parents, Mitchell and Monica Holt Parrish, siblings, Brooke, Miana, Elena, Xavier, and Mitchell Parrish, Jr. She plans to attend West Virginia University, majoring in clinical hygiene to become an oral surgeon. She also plans to continue cheering on the all-girl competition team at WVU. Kay is a biomedical career tech program. She's involved in our club, Interact Club, Perry High School track team, and the all-in club fighting for racial and gender equality. 
She has cheered six years for Perry's game day team and five years for competition. Kay's favorite cheer memory is making TikToks with her bus driver while the competition team sat in Columbus after placing fourth in the state cheer competition. Her academic achievements are maintaining a 3.6 GPA and qualifying for National Honor Society. Kay would like to send a special thanks to both Coach Keith and her family for pushing her to be better athlete so she can pursue her dream of cheering at a D1 school. Kay Parrish. Senior mascot, Liberty Pope, escorted by Mrs. Russo. She plans to attend college, majoring in anthropology and archaeology, and is undecided on a school at this time. She's involved in Perry's college prep educational track. Liberty is an advanced art program. She's been the Perry mascot for four years. Her favorite cheer memory was getting stuck in a mascot suit after a dance battle at the Firestone basketball game, and Kenzie and her almost missing the bus home. Liberty would like to give a special thanks to Mr. Slates, Mrs. Russo, Mrs. Dietz, Mrs. Stephan, and Mrs. Dalt for always believing in her and that her choices impact not only school, but everyday life. In addition, special thanks go to her parents for making her see her self-worth, resiliency, strength, and weaknesses that make her who she is today. Liberty Poe. The Perry cheerleaders would like to thank Mears Nissan, our support spirit sponsors for the t-shirts and masks they wore during the football season. They want to thank you, Mears Nissan. There you have it, fans. Perry, senior football and cheerleaders. One big round of applause for all of them. Ladies and gentlemen, we draw your attention to the west end of Panther Stadium for the presentation of the colors. Presenting the colors this evening are members of our Perry High School Junior ROTC program. Please stand for the passing of the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, to celebrate our American freedoms and our American democracy, we invite all who are in the stands, as well as those on the track and concession areas of the stadium, to please stand at their places, face our stars and stripes, and join in the singing of our Star Spangled Banner. Ladies and gentlemen, your hats, please.
thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and may God bless America. lost the late 28 27 they played four overtime games the last one in double overtime uh, so that was one of the reasons and that was Amir's Nissan keys to the game was they want to pull away early um, so that's where we're at Perry won the coin toss and deferred to the second half Perry's in their all black uniforms and white numbers and Glen Oak is in their white jerseys green pants and green numbers so we are ready for the start of this federal league matchup as like i mentioned one of these teams is going to get their first federal league win of the year tonight and we're going to see who it's going to be as we are ready for kickoff and perry's going to be kicking Perry's going to be kicking from right to left. And we'll get to see Glen Oaks offense to start the game. And uh, we're all teed up and ready to rock here in week 10. As always, thank you guys for spending your Friday night. A little brisk out there tonight. Uh, we're going to have a kickoff temperature of 50 degrees. Uh, winds blowing um, right now it's still but when when the flag is moving it's blowing from west to east the ball is teed up and it's in the air and week 10 is underway it's going to be fielded at the five yard line by Glen Oak they're going to bring it out to the 20 and then he's going to be swallowed up at the 23 yard line 24 yard line they're going to call it it's going to be first and 10 golden eagles and they're going to be going from left to right. We're going to get to see six foot three, 175 pound senior quarterback Isaiah Knox. This will be my first time covering the Golden Eagles this year, and I believe my third or fourth time covering Perry and their wing T. So we're going to see. We're going to see what Glen Oak has to offer. They're going to put Knox in the shotgun right off the bat. He's going to take the snap, and he's going to flip it off to a receiver who's going to go up the left side and maybe gained a few yards. The receiver on the, the stretch play was a Michael Davis, 6'2", 180-pound senior wide receiver. And it looks like we got no gain there, second and 10 from their own 24-yard line in the backfield with Isaiah Knox, is sophomore running back Avante Burt, who is the younger brother of St. Thomas's now graduated all Ohio, do all at every position kid, Asian Burt, uh, who is now at Mount. And Knox for Glen Oak is now in the shotgun again. They're gonna put a man in motion this time they're going to hand it off to Burt who's going to come up the right side tries to catch the corner and it's going to look like see it's going to be third down and nine as they're going to give him a yard on that or third and five sorry they gave him five third and five on the play so Burt got half of it to make it third and medium we're under 11 minutes to play here in the first quarter we have no score here comes Knox again. This time, Burt's going to be sitting on his left hip. He's got three receivers to his left, one to his right, and he's going to drop back to pass and roll left immediately. Looking downfield, he's going to let it fly, and it's going to be complete at the 40 and out of bounds, and it's going to be a first and 10, and that was complete to Logan Scott. Six foot, 200 pounds, senior wide out for the Golden Eagles. Moves the chains and moves the Golden Eagles up to their own 42-yard line.
They break the huddle. Back in the shotgun this time, they have Burt behind him. They're going to hand it off to, to Burt, who's going to go up the right side, runs into his own lineman, and cuts back to the left. Breaks it across the line. He's to the 50 into Perry territory, down at the 45-yard line before he's shoved from behind. And it looks like it's going to be another Glen Oak first down as they move into Perry territory. Asian Burt, 5'7", 150 pounds, and he's a quick one. He's got a quick first step, and you can lose him in that mass of big men up front, and that's exactly what happened there as he reversed field. And Knox is going to have a receiver to each side. He's going to take the handoff off to Burt again, who runs up to the right side, gains two yards before he's tripped up. Under 10 minutes to play. It's going to be second down and eight from the Perry 43-yard line. Still no score. Glen Oak moving it. They like to, they like to, uh, you're going to see Perry be very run heavy with the wing tee, but Glen Oak likes to mix it up a little bit. They like to put it in Burt's hands, and then they like to get it in Davis's hands. Knox takes the shotgun, drops back to pass, whips it over to the left, and it's complete again. And they're going to have a late flag there, and it was Michael Davis on the reception again. And there's a little bit of late activity. It's going to be a personal foul on the defense for a late hit, which is going to bring it even further into Perry territory and an automatic first down for the Golden Eagles. So that's going to move the Golden Eagles inside the Stratton Chevrolet red zone for the first time tonight. Knox goes right to the line in the shotgun. He's got two receivers to the right, one to the left. He's going to hand it off to Burt, who goes up the right side, and he's going to be thrown to the ground in the backfield as he got nowhere. Christian Ivanek there on the tackle for Perry. He's going to bring up second down and 10 from the 18-yard line. Uh, Glen Oak stays in the Stratton Chevrolet red zone there after no gain. Nine minutes to go here in the first quarter. Still no score. This time you're going to have a receiver to each side. And it's going to be whistled dead. So they made uh, Michael Davis come out of the game. I'm not sure why, and they had to replace him. And we're back at the line and ready to go, and Knox takes the snap, and he hands it off to Bird, who goes up the left side, gets around the corner. He's down and inside the 15-yard line before he's shoved out of bounds, and it's going to bring up third down. Third down and five from the Perry 13-yard line. So Glen Oak knocking on the door here. Here we go, Knox approaches the line, takes a snap and hands it off to Bird again. He goes to the left side, he gets around the corner, dives forward. Let's see if they give him the first down and it looks like they will. So it's gonna be first and goal for Glen Oak as Avante Burke gets the left corner, dives towards the first down line and gets there. And it's gonna be first and goal from the seven for Glen Oak. As they're going no huddle right now. Knox barking orders at the line. Back in the shotgun, two receivers to the left. He hands it off to Bird again. Goes left again. Spin move, but there's nowhere to go. As there's a gang of Perry tacklers that's going to drive him back and bring it up to second and goal. 8-18 remaining here in the first quarter. Still no score, but Glen Oaks knocking on the door. This time they're going to put Knox under center, power eye. They're going to hand it off to Bird, who goes straight up the middle. 
And the pile's gonna stop his momentum at about the three yard line. That's gonna bring up third and goal from the four. We'll keep you updated with the other scores around Stark County here in rivalry week. And already Hunter Geisinger's first throw of the game against Hoover's a pick six and the Vikings are up seven to nothing. Back here, it's third and goal for Glen Oak. From the Perry four yard line. They're gonna put Knox under center again. Now he's gonna step back into the shotgun. He's got Burt in the backfield, drops the ball, picks it up and runs it up. They're gonna say when he picked it up, he put his knee down. So he lost yardage there as he dropped the snap and then kneeled down to pick it up, but his knee touched. So he was down automatically there, which is gonna bring up fourth and goal and Glen Oak's gonna bring on the field goal unit. There's the snap, the hold, the kick is up. Line drive straight into the band, and it's good as Glen Oak takes a three to nothing lead. We'll be back after this. At Sarda, we make safety a priority. We constantly clean and sanitize our vehicles and transit centers. We mask up, we social distance, and we accept easy fare, the contactless, safe way to pay. That's why people use Sarda's fixed route service more than 1.2 million times in the past year, and why you can trust us to protect you every time. You ride. Wherever life takes you today, ride Sarda, the safe, affordable, convenient way to travel across Stark County and beyond. You're listening to High School Football, presented by Sarshone Ford, streaming live at Q92RadioSports.com. Back here is the Golden Eagles drive down the field and put three points on the board on their first drive of the game. 6.25 to go here in the first quarter. The Golden Eagles up three to nothing. Now we'll get to see Perry and their offense for the first time tonight. As Glen Oak is in to kick it off to the Panthers. Glen Oak will be kicking from left to right, which means Perry will be running their offense going right to left. Looks like Tussle is up 6 nothing on Fairless early. Extra point was no good there. So now Glen Oak here is ready to tee it up and kick it off to Perry. A high kick is going to be fielded at the two-yard line. Here comes Perry out to the 20, to the 25, to the 30. He's going to be piled over at the 32-yard line. Good return there by the Panthers. As uh, That was Sam Thompson on the return for Perry. And they'll start first and 10 from their own 33-yard line. Now we get to see the wing T. Sophomore quarterback Carson Basham heads in from the sideline. As like I said, he's one of the one of the quarterbacks who run all the way to the sideline for every play, and they're gonna start him under center. We'll see who they got in the backfield. Looks like they got DeAndre Church back there as they're going to hand it off to Church right away. And he's thrown for a loss as Glen Oak was all over that one. And that's going to bring up second down. See who was on the tackle on that one because he almost met the ball there. Looks like that was uh, Austin Potter, six foot, 190 pound linebacker. And it's getting getting crazy over in North Canton. It's already 14 to nothing over Jackson. So Carson's now in the shotgun, takes the snap and hands it off to Church. Church goes straight up the middle, gains yardage back and then some. That's going to bring up third down as the Panthers make it out to their own 40 yard line. So it's going to be third and four. So a good job by DeAndre Church weaving his way through traffic to make the third down play. 
shorter. 5-15 remaining here in the first quarter. Glen Oak up three to nothing. Basham's in the shotgun. He's got Church on his right. Got a receiver to his left. They put Ruiz in motion. They hand it right off to Church. He tries to go up the left side, and again, he's got nowhere to go. Might have even lost a yard back to the 39-yard line, and that brings up fourth and five for Perry. And we'll see what they want to do. As we have to remember that Carson Basham, a lot of times, is also their punter. Uh, so he can be in the shotgun and read the defense and then take his two-step drop uh, and, and punt it back. And they punt it back. There's a flag. Nope, no flag. They punted it back. He took the two steps back. And uh, it was Logan Scott back deep for Glen Oak. So Glen Oak will take back over on offense, up three to nothing with 4.15 remaining here in the first quarter. So they're going to start from their own 33. Knox in the shotgun. He's got Burt to his left. He's got a receiver to the right, a receiver to the left. Both out wide, takes a snap, and he hands it off to Burt, who tries to go right. He's going to try to get the corner. He gets over across the 35. We'll see where they spot him as he gained a few yards there, stayed in bounds. They're going to mark him down at the 39-yard line, which is going to bring up second and four after the six-yard carry by Avante Burt. His stop and start is incredible as he gets stuck behind linemen at times and then reverses field, almost like a Barry Sanders type where he can hop, stop, jump, and accelerate very quickly, which is a nightmare for players on the edge and linebackers alike. So back in the shotgun goes Knox. He's going to take the snap, and he's going to roll left, and it's going to be a quarterback run all the way. He goes straight up the middle. He gets across the 45, another first down for Glen Oak. Right at the 50 is where they're going to mark the ball. Or nope, they're going to move it back two yards. It's going to be at the 48, but it'll be first and 10 Golden Eagles. 3-10 remaining here in the first quarter. Glen Oak still up by a field goal, 3-0. Knox takes the snap and hands it off to Burt, who goes up left again and gains maybe a yard before he's swallowed up by a couple of Panther defenders. That's going to bring up second down and nine. Handled by number 20, Christian Ivanek. They're actually going to give him, they're not going to give him the forward progress. It's going to be second and 10 from the 48, no gain. 2.30 remaining here in the first quarter. Knox is going to drop back the pass, fires it over to the left side. And it's going to be incomplete as the intended target dives for the ball. And it just hit the ground. It was intended for Ben Oliver, another 6'2", 178-pound senior wideout. Going to bring up third and 10 for the Golden Eagles. Their first true third and long of the ball game thus far. Going to keep Knox in the shotgun. This time they're going to put Burt behind him. Going to have two receivers to his right, one to his left. Drops back to pass, fakes the handoff to Birdie, rolls right, looking downfield, fires it right over the middle. Incomplete, intended for Stefan Stewart. That's going to bring up fourth and long, and Glen Oak will bring out the punting unit with 2.12 remaining here in the first quarter, up three to nothing. They're going to give it back to the Panthers, who will have Cameron Gill waiting back deep. Number three, Logan Scott. Need to receive number 17. Snap. Punt. It's going to be fair caught. 
at about the 17 yard line where the Panthers will take over first and 10. 2.05 to go here in the first quarter. Comes Basham and company. First and 10 from their own 18. See if they can get something going here. They're going to put Basham under center. Church in the backfield and a receiver to the left. They're going to put Ruiz in motion, fake the handoff to him and give it to Church who is going to get just driven all the way back. And I don't think he gained a single yard. It's going to be second and 10. So right now, the Glen Oak Golden Eagles defensive front doing a good job of closing up the holes and staying in their lanes. Same formation with Basham under center. Going to take the snap. Fakes the hand off to Church, and this time they hand it off. Straight up the middle to the left side. It's to Ryder Hartshorn, who's running to the 50, 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Perry. As he takes it all the way. No flags. I don't see any on the carpet. And that gives the Panthers the lead. More backup running back. Takes it off of the fake to DeAndre all the way to the house to get Perry in the lead and on the board. Extra point still to come. Extra point up. It's good. Seven to three, Perry. We'll be back after this. At Mears Nissan, the goal is to offer quality vehicles and excellent customer services along with their must-see guarantee. With must-see pricing, what you see is what you pay. With must-see convenience, see how easy it is to shop with Mears Connected. With must-see service, discover why so many drivers trust their factory-trained technician. With must-see financing, the Mears Nissan team does whatever it takes to help you drive home. Mears Nissan is located at 4825 Tuscarora Street West. So Stop by today or shop online at MearsNissan.com. You're listening to High School Football, presented by Sarshone Ford, streaming live at Q92RadioSports.com. We're back with 115 remaining here in the first quarter. Perry now takes the lead, 7-3 over Glen Oak. They're getting ready to kick it back, and it'll be the Golden Eagles' turn to respond. As always, I want to thank you guys for spending your Friday night with me here on Q92RadioSports.com. Week 10, here we are. Playoffs are right around the corner. And uh, they're playing the jump around here. As the student section starts to go crazy. Ball's teed up and Perry's ready to give it back to Glen Oak. They put it in the air and it's going to be fielded at the 10-yard line. Out to the 20, to the 25, and that's where he'll be stopped. And where the Golden Eagles will have first and 10 with a minute 10 remaining here in the first quarter. So we'll see if Isaiah Knox and company can respond. Nikki, you make sure you're driving home safe. And let me know when you get there. Knox, back in the shotgun. Takes the snap, hands it off to Burt, who goes up to the left side. He breaks free out to the 30, and he's caught from behind. Out to the 29-yard line, cuts it in half. So 
Second and five from their own 30-yard line. We're under a minute to play here in the first quarter. Empty backfield for Knox as he's in the shotgun five wide. He's going to drop back to pass. He's going to try to run it straight up the middle. And Perry was waiting on it as they drive him back and into the ground to bring up third and five. So that's going to be the end of the first quarter. We'll step away. This is high school football brought to you by Sarshone Ford on Q92. the same old event food? Consider Aunt Allie's Catering. Aunt Allie's fulfills catering needs seven days a week. Need party trays, box lunches, breakfast? Aunt Allie's Catering delivers, literally. We'll deliver or you can pick it up. Main courses, pasta, sides, salads. How about oven fried chicken tenders with dipping sauces? Or Italian sausage and peppers with a side of cheesy potatoes? Mmm, Aunt Allie's Catering. Check them out online at AuntAllie'sCatering.com or call the Birdhouse Deli at 479-1671. Aunt Allie's Catering. In the last year, we've spent a lot more time at home. Whether working remotely or even working out, we've found a way to keep up. If the last year's shown us anything, it's that being at home together and taking care of our families is the most important thing. That's why our appliances, furniture, and even our mattresses make all the difference. So when it's time to buy something new, get service on something you own, or just explore your options, head to Grow because they've got a local showroom full of options. Everything you need to take care of your family. Visit Grow, where it always feels like Home. Come see us at Grove, where it always feels like home. You're listening to High School Football, presented by Sarshone Ford, streaming live at Q92RadioSports.com. Back to start the second quarter. And Knox is in the shotgun five wide, and he's going to drop back to pass, and he's going to run it up the middle again, and this time he gets out to the 40-yard line, and a first down for the Golden Eagles. They tried the same play, but instead of running it straight up the middle for Knox, he went left, and he got it. Again, Perry leads Glen Oaks 7-3 here, 11.52 remaining in the first half. Glen Oak with the football. Time they're going to put Burt back in the backfield with Knox. He takes the snap and hands it off to Burt, who tries to go up the middle, and he's got nowhere to go as a slew of Perry Panthers are there to stop him. It's going to bring up second and 10 from their own 40 yard line. Under 11 to play here in the first half. Knox in the shotgun. Burt behind him, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Fakes the handoff to Burt, and he rolls right. Knox taken off. Up and dives across the 50, and we'll see if they give him the spot as he's close to another first down, and they do. They're going to mark it right at the 50, but it'll move the chains for the Golden Eagles. First and 10 now for the Golden Eagles from the midfield strike. Knox takes the snap. This time he's going to hand it off to Davis, who tries to go up the middle, and he gets nowhere. It's going to be second and 10. Going to stay at the 50. all over Jackson, 21 to nothing right now. So that one's getting ugly early. It's still the first quarter. Knox takes the snap here. He's going to roll right again, waiting. Darts up the middle. 
Gains about five yards before he's tripped up. He's going to bring up about third and five for Glen Oak. A little more manageable of a third down. And they are into Perry territory on the Perry 45-yard line. 9.23 remaining here in the first half with the Panthers up 7-3. Knox in the shotgun. Looks like he's got Dakotas Davis in the backfield with him. Drops back to pass. Looks left, puts it in the air, complete to Logan Scott. Breaks free down to the 30. Breaks another tackle before he's buried under at the 27-yard line. And another late flag. Looks like it might be on Perry again, which will drive him. Drive the uh, Golden Eagles even deeper into Perry territory. That's the second one tonight. So it was already going to be a first down, but it's going to be even deeper now as it'll probably knock the Glen Oak Golden Eagles into the Stratton Chevrolet red zone again here tonight. They're going to mark it off. We'll see where they stop it here. Down to the 13, so it'll be, Glen Oak will be inside the Stratton Chevrolet red zone. It'll be first and 10 from the Perry 14-yard line. 8.47 to go here in the first half. Panthers up 7-3. Knox in the shotgun. Puts a man in motion. It's Davis. Fakes the flip to Davis and gives it to Dakotas, who tries to go up the middle. He's going to be gang tackled by about three or four Panthers. It's going to bring up second down. We'll see if they gave him any yardage on that one. They gave him one yard, so it'll be second and nine. 8.30 to go here in the first half. See what we got here. So the play prior to the snap, there was an illegal shift on Glen Oak. So that's going to be a five-yard penalty. Back to the 18-yard line. So now it'll be first and 15, as that play didn't even count. Knox takes the snap, rolls right, looking downfield, keeps it himself, gets the corner and runs towards that pylon, or runs towards that first down marker. And that's the original line of scrimmage that he got back to, so it's going to be third down and long as they're back to the 14-yard line. Second and 10. It's going to be second and 10 from the 13. Fake the handoff to Burt, and he's going to break to the other side. Knox tries to get free. A flag on the play there at the end as he was tackled at about the 10-yard line. 8.07 to go here in the first half. Perry still up 7-3 over Glen Oak, and we'll see what the flag is. It's an illegal blindside block on the offense, so Glen Oak's really going to get knocked, knocked back. It's going to be second and 23 from the Perry 26-yard line. That knocks them out of the red zone, which is brought to you by Stratton Chevrolet. So second and 23 from the Perry 26-yard line. Eight minutes to go here in the first half. Knox in the shotgun. Burt to his right, trips to the right, one to the left. Going to roll right. Knox takes a snap. Looking back to the left side to Davis. Nothing there. Looks downfield. Puts it in the air. Incomplete. 
out of the reach of a diving receiver. The Hunter was the intended receiver for Glen Oak. It's going to bring up third and 23 now. in the shotgun, Burt right behind him. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Knox takes a snap, drops back to pass, puts it in the air, complete down to the five yard line to his intended target. It's gonna make it first and goal as they got it to Stefan Stewart. It's gonna be first and goal from the three yard line as Glen Oak re-enters the Stratton Chevrolet red zone as they are knocking on the door again. A great pitch and catch there between Isaiah Knox and Stefan Stewart. We're gonna stack the eye. Knox under center. Takes the snap, hands it off to Burt, who goes right off tackle, and he's in the end zone for a Glen Oak touchdown as the Golden Eagles take the lead back. Nine to seven with the extra points still to come. 7-17 remaining in the first half. up for the extra point. Silas, it's up and it's good. 10-7 Glen Oak, we'll be back after this. Omni Express Walk-In Clinic is here for you day and night, and even on Saturday with new extended hours. Turn your orthopedic ouch into an ah. The Walk-In Clinic is open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Saturday. No appointment needed. Come to Omni Express first for fast expert care. Located at Omni Orthopedics, 4760 Belpar Street in Belton Village. Visit OmniOrtho.com or call 330-492-9200. You're listening to High School Football, presented by Sarshone Ford, streaming live at Q92RadioSports.com. Back here is now Glen Oak. Leads 10-7. About to kick it back to Perry. See now if the Panthers can respond. 7-17 remaining here in the first half. Glen Oak up 10-7. Ball is in the air. It's going to be fielded at the four-yard line. Out to the 15, to the 20, to the 25, to the 30. Breaks a tackle, stumbles down at the 40-yard line. Another great return by Sam Thompson for the Panthers to give them good starting field position here with 7.09 to go in the first half. Shoestring tackle, Sam Thompson might have been gonzo. Hoover 21, Jackson 0, first quarter. They're going to hand it off after Basham was under center. They try to go right. Looks like they lost two yards there. It's going to be second down and 12 from their own 38-yard line. We're under seven minutes to play here in the first half. get a chance to see who that ball carrier was for Perry, but he lost two on it. They got Church in the backfield. Basham under center. They put Hartshorn in motion, but they hand it off to Church who goes straight up the middle. Busts across the 50-yard line. 
for a Panther first down and into Glen Oak territory. Great run by DeAndre Church as he just bowled his way over a couple of Golden Eagle defenders. 6-10 remaining here in the second quarter. Basham under center. They put Thompson in motion, but hand it off to Church. Church bounces off one tackle, but can't get rid of the other two. The ball's fumble and picked up by Glen Oak, but they're going to say that Church was down by contact before he lost the football. And good thing, because that would have been a touchdown for Glen Oak. Instead, we're going to be second and 10 for Perry from the Glen Oak 49 yard line, 527 to go in the second quarter. Church in the backfield again. Basham under center, takes the snap, hands it off to Church, tries to go right. Gets up to the 50, up oh, lost a yard. It's back to the 50, so it's gonna be third and 11. We're under five minutes to play here in the first half. Glen Oak up 10 to seven. You gotta think this is an obvious passing down for a team that doesn't do it very often. Basham under center, one receiver out to the left. Carson drops back the pass, he's got no time, puts it over the middle, complete to his intended target, who is Cameron Gill, and they're gonna be a yard short, but it's gonna be fourth down from the Glen Oak 40 yard line, fourth and one. He got rid of that ball just in time as two defenders for Glen Oak came off of the left edge of his blind side and gave him less than two seconds to respond, but he whipped it out there. And now they're gonna go for it. Under four minutes to play. Basham under center, takes the snap, hands it off straight up. Do they give him the first down or not? He dove straight forward. I don't personally think he got that, but we'll see where they spot him as both teams met up there at the line of scrimmage. And they're still looking, still spotting the ball. Glen Oak thinks that they get the ball right then and there and they didn't let them. So they're gonna, they're gonna bring out the chains and they're gonna measure it. So we'll see, it's gotta be close enough for them to wanna do this. It was fourth and one from the Glen Oak 40 yard line and they did a dive play up the middle and it's close. Comes the chain gang, 3.49 to go here in the first half. Glen Oak up 10 to seven. There we go. And this is gonna be close. They didn't get it and the Glen Oak players explode to the sideline and Knox and company will take over from their own 40 with 3.49 to go. And they have all three of their timeouts remaining. Just got word from the Sarda scoreboard that the Green Bulldogs are up over Lake 21 to nothing. So we got two Federal League matchups across town, both at 21 to nothing right now. Green over Lake and Hoover is all over Jackson as they are looking to take home the Federal League title outright. Here comes Knox and the shotgun. He's got Burt in the backfield right behind him. Two receivers to his right, takes the snap, hands it off to Burt who goes up to the right side. He's across the 45, cuts back, tries to bolt forward to the 50 and he's brought down at the 50 yard line. And we'll see if they give him the spot for the first down and they do. First and 10 Glen Oak as they sneak into Perry territory at the 49 and a half yard line on the Perry side of the 50. 340 to go. Glen Oak would love to put points on the board before half as Perry will get the ball to start the second half. Now Knox in the shotgun. 
Takes the snap, gonna hand it off to Burt, who's coming left. Tries to get the corner, he's wrapped up, and it's a fumble! Flag on the play, and Perry comes up with the football. That might have just been the marker there. There might not even be a flag on the play. Yeah, we got a Perry player down in pain, but Perry comes up with the football on a big turnover as Burt coughed it up trying to turn the corner. And as they tend to the injured player, we'll step away. This is high school football brought to you by Sarshon Ford on Q92. Douglas Auto Body is a local family-owned company and has been delivering expert auto collision repair for 34 years. If you've been in an accident, you have the right to choose where to get your vehicle repaired. And the auto insurance experts at Douglas Auto Body will help you make the process as easy and efficient as possible. Doug and the guys will have your vehicle looking like new. Call for an estimate today at 330-494-6001. Mention this ad with your collision repair and get a $25 Walther's Cafe gift certificate. You're listening to High School Football, presented by Sarshone Ford, streaming live at Q92RadioSports.com. So now it'll be Perry's football on their own 38-yard line, first and 10 after the fumble recovery. They're going to take the snap, hand it off. No gain on the play there. As Ryder Hartshorn was the ball carrier there. Going to bring up second and 10. As we approach the three-minute mark here of the second quarter. Basham under center. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff to Church. Basham's going to go up over the top. And there's going to be incomplete pass, but a flag on the play. As the Glen Oak defender made no attempt at the football, that was Michael Davis for Glen Oak on the pass interference. It's going to give Perry an automatic first down and move the chains. As Davis might not like it, but he kept a hold of the intended receiver, who was Cameron Gill, and never let go. Number 35, 15-yard penalty. That's a 15-yarder. Coming up on the halftime show, we'll send it back to the newsroom for a Jeff Mears news break. We'll check out the Sardis scoreboard at all the scores going on around Stark County. And then we'll preview tomorrow's rivalry game, the big one, the game. Maslin McKinley. But we still got 241 left in the first half of this one. Basham's in the shotgun, takes the snap. He's going to hand it off to Church, who goes left to center, breaks free to the 40. Down to the 35 yard line as they move into Perry, or they move into Glen Oak territory, first and 10. 234 to go. And they'd love to put points on the board here, knowing they also get the ball in the second half and double up. They are on the Glen Oak 35 yard line. Basham in the shotgun, he's got Church to his left. Puts Thompson in motion, fakes the handoff to Thompson and Basham's gonna try to run it himself and he's got nowhere to go, might have even lost a yard. Gonna bring up second and 11 from the 36 yard line with under two minutes to play now here in the first half. Basham under center. Church, the lone back, fakes the handoff to Church and then gives it to Thompson who runs right, cuts back up the middle to the 20, down to the 16 yard line. As they move into the Stratton Chevrolet red zone, what a great cut back by Sam Thompson. It's gonna be another first and 10 for Perry. Number 
So they'd like to wind this thing all the way down before they put the ball in the end zone. Basham under center. Takes a snap, gives it to Church, who goes left of the tackle, and he fights his way forward down to the, they're going to say the 12-yard line, and Perry's going to call a timeout, so we'll step away. This is high school football, brought to you by Sarshone Ford on Q92. Stark County, have you heard? The Birdhouse Deli is the word. The Birdhouse Deli has breakfast and hot lunch features every day, along with fresh salads, subs, wraps, and desserts. Come see the vinyl room with timeless vinyl record album covers displayed throughout and the Pepperland Porch, a tribute to the Beatles painted by local artists. Come for the art and decor, stay for the fresh homemade food. The Birdhouse is located off Route 30 at Raff Road at 2103 Gambrenis Road. The Birdhouse is the word. You're listening to High School Football, presented by Sarshon Ford, streaming live at Q92RadioSports.com. Back here with 101 remaining here in the first half. Glen Oak up 10 to 7. Perry inside the Stratton Chevrolet red zone on the Glen Oak 11 yard line, second and five. They'll have two timeouts remaining. Glen Oak with all three. Perry looking to put more points on the board before half. They're going to put Basham in the shotgun, Church to the left, one receiver to the right. They hand it off to Church. Goes up the right side, fights free down to the five-yard line before he's brought down by two Golden Eagles. And that's going to bring up third down. We'll see where they mark this as across the field here. Up, they're going to say first down. They gave him the spot, so it's first and goal. They're going to hand it off to Basham, who's going to run it straight up the middle. Dives forward for the goal line. And they're going to mark him down at the one-yard line. Second and goal with 35 seconds to go. We'll see what they want to do here. Slates would like to get it off without using a timeout, I think. So we're at 27 seconds. Gives the ball to Basham, runs it back into the huddle. 22 seconds. They got Church in the backfield. Basham under center. Basham takes the snap, hands it off to Church. Bulls forward up the middle. And he's in for the Perry touchdown. And the Panthers take the lead right back. It's 13 to 10 with the extra point still to come. Five seconds to go in the first half. Extra points up, and it is good. It is now 14 to 10 Panthers with five seconds to go. We'll get a kickoff. So we'll just leave it here for the after after uh, the touchdown kickoff here back to Glen Oak with five seconds to go here in the first half. Davis will be back deep for Glen Oak. Avante Burt will be back deep for Glen Oak. And McNeil will be back deep for Glen Oak. And Basham is lined up and ready to kick it. Kick it off. He's actually just going to squib kick it right down the middle. It's going to roll around to the 20. Picked up at the 20-yard line. Davis gets it. 
Tries to run it up the middle. He gets nowhere. He's going to be tackled at the 23-yard line, and that's going to end the first half with the Perry Panthers leading the Glen Oak Golden Eagles. Uh, but here we are at the score. Perry 14, Glen Oak 10. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the 50-yard line as the Glen Oak Eagle Marching Band takes the field to present tonight's halftime show. Tonight, sit back and relax as the Glen Oak Band takes you on a trip back through some of the most memorable music in the last five decades, from popular hits to rock and roll and everything in between. We're going to start in the 1970s with this hit by Electric Light Orchestra. Here's Mr. Blue Sky. Female rock artists ruled the 1980s, and this hit by Pat Benatar rose to the top of the charts at the start of the decade. Here's Hit Me With Your Best Shot.
Match Box 20's Rob Thomas enlisted the legendary guitar skills of Carlos Santana for this 1990s hit. Here's their smash single, Smooth. The senior band and color guard students selected this final song to close our decade show. Released in 2020, here's Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. Ladies and gentlemen, the pride of Plain Township, the 2021 Glen Oak Golden Eagle Marching Band. The band is under the direction of Chris Irwin, Kelsey Giada, Elise Laux, Color Guard Advisor Jackie Blades, Major Ed Advisor Kimberly Estep, and Percussion Advisor Brent Mazon.
Ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Ryan Smith with assistant directors Karen Martin and Joe Sterling, with percussion instructor Darren Good and auxiliary instructor Madison Nusick, led by field commanders Leah Briggs, Anola Maley, Jack McGraw, and Lily Stewart, we proudly present the 2021 edition of our Perry High School Marching Band. Tonight, the Perry High School Marching Band will recognize their senior class of 2022. The 2022 senior band members have had a spectacular four years, earning 16 superior ratings, eight awards for best music, five grand champion awards, and qualified for state finals in every competition they have performed in. Naya Bade, escorted by parents Darlene and Brian Bade, Stefania Bigham, escorted by mother Jennifer Bigham and stepfather Ryan Stifler. Anthony Cechanese, escorted by parents Julie and Eric Hoglin and grandmother Sue Maley. Sheridan Chandler, escorted by parents Stephanie and Ben Chandler. Zachary Essinger, escorted by mother Christine Essinger. Ann Farner, escorted by parents Lee and Alan Farner and brother Carl Farner. Benjamin Ferguson, escorted by parents Alyssa Ernst and Trevor Ferguson. Mason Friedrichsen, escorted by parents Julie and Patrick Friedrichsen. Dominic Gallo, escorted by parents Lori and Mark Slates. Kendra Harland, escorted by parents Kim and Gerald Harland. Riley Lapicus. Escorted by parents Carrie and Brian Lapicus. Anola Maley. Escorted by parents Stephanie and Jeremy Maley. Sophia Molinari. Escorted by parents Denise and Michael Molinari. <laughs> Antonio Mora, escorted by parents Leanne and Ramon Burnham, Samuel Mora at Eden Gray. Hannah Pop, escorted by parents Lori Corbin and Thomas Pop, and sister Emily Pop. <laughs> Henry Rapp, escorted by parents George and Samuel Rapp. Carson Strebler, escorted by parents Melanie and Steve Strebler.
Samuel Stillian, escorted by parents Missy and Trevor Stillian and brother Jonah Stillian. Robbie Stitt, escorted by parents Tabitha and Jeremy Stitt. Lily Stewart, escorted by parents Shelley Stewart and Will Stewart. Brody Trump, escorted by parents Stasia and Keith Trump. Ashton Turkle, escorted by parents Stephanie and John Turkle and sister Ava Turkle. Claire Vranich, escorted by parents Shelley and Mike Vranich. Stephen Wright, escorted by parents Heidi and Greg Wright. Carly Ojo, escorted by grandparents Brenda and Ryan Slavak and mother Andrea Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, our band members of the senior class of 2022. Members of the student body, loyal alumni, ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to stand and join in the singing of the alma mater of our beloved Perry High School.
You're doing great. The Perry High School Marching Band would like to thank all of our fans, parents, and administrators for your continued support. We'd like to congratulate our Marching Panthers for qualifying to the OMEA State Marching Band Finals for the 10th consecutive year. As always, you are truly the pride of Perry. The Marching Panthers would like to ask all of our fans in attendance to stick around after this evening's game for a special presentation of our 2021 OMEA competition show, The Phantom of the Opera. Thank you, and go! Perry! Here are the statistics for the first half of tonight's game. First down, Perry had six, Klein Oak had 12. Yards rushing, Perry had 144 yards on 18 carries. Klein Oak had 102 yards on 24 carries. The leading rusher for Perry was Ryder Hartshorn with 80 yards on three carries. The leading rusher for Klein Oak was Avante Bird with 64 yards on 15 carries. Passing for Perry, Carson Basham was one for one for 10 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. And for Glen Oak, Isaiah Knox was five for eight for 62 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Leading receiver for Perry was Cameron Gill with one catch for 10 yards. Leading receiver for Glen Oak was Logan Scott with two catches for 30 yards. Turnovers, Perry had none, Glen Oak won. Penalties, Perry had two for 30 yards. Glen Oak had three for 35 yards. First half touchdowns for Perry were scored by Ryder Hartshorn on an 82-yard run and DeAndre Church on a one-yard run. First half touchdown for Glen Oak was scored by Avante Burt on a three-yard run. Glen Oak added a 23-yard field goal by Silas Kelsiak. Fans, if you look at the scoreboard, we have tonight's 50-50 winner. For $301, it is ticket 646-119. 646-119. If you have that number, please bring it to the press box and claim your prize.
Number three, Carson Basham with the keeper. Again, Panthers in the Stratton Chevrolet red zone, letting that clock run. Basham stays in the shotgun. He's got a receiver out wide right. It's Thompson. Basham takes a snap. He's going to run it again. He's going left. He breaks one tackle down to the five. He's driven out of bounds at the three-yard line, four-yard line. And it's going to be second down. Second and one from the four. As we approach... 6.06 to go here in the third quarter. Perry's knocking on the door again. Down 17-14. See if they keep Basham in the shotgun. They will. They'll, Church is on his left. Thompson out wide right. Take the snap. Basham keeps it again, pushes forward to the goal line. Touchdown, Perry, as Basham runs it in and gives the Panthers the lead right back. The extra point still to come with 6.01 to go. Extra points up, and it is good. We'll be back after this. And we're checking in with Joe at the Sarshone Ford family of dealerships in Alliance, Waynesburg, and Randolph. So, Joe, when you have a big family of dealerships like that, that means you have great selection. And that's especially true right now on your selection of Ford F-150s. The shortage is still out there, but not here at Sarshone Ford. We have the best selection around of F-150s on ground, ready to sell, and like always, the best trade-in values around. Let's get that new vehicle on its way to your driveway. Get your own at Sarshone. You're listening to High School Football presented by Sarshone Ford streaming live at Q92RadioSports.com Back here is 6.01 remaining here in the third quarter. Perry takes the lead right back 21-17 over Glen Oak. And Hoover is just walking away with the Federal League title in the third quarter. They are absolutely dominating Jackson 31 to nothing. Here we go. Perry kicking it back to Glen Oak, and it's their turn as these teams seem to be going back and forth so far tonight. Line drive kick is going to be fielded at the 19-yard line. And it's going to be whistled. Dead. They said his knee was down at the 19, or at the 14-yard line, sorry. He said when he kneeled down to pick the football up to run, he had his left knee down. So that's where Glen Oak will start deep in their own territory on their own 14. Here comes Knox. He's going to have Burt in the backfield with him. Two receivers to the left. They hand it off to Burt. Goes left, straight back up the middle, out to the 21-yard line. And he's brought down to bring up second down. So a seven-yard gain. It's going to be second and three. For Glen Oak, they're going left to right. Knox in the shotgun. Two receivers to the left. 
Knox goes left as he fakes the handoff to Burt, and he's going to lose a bunch of yards as Perry was all over it. And that's going to bring up third down and push it back even further to the 21-yard line. So that makes it now third and seven. Under five minutes to play here in the third quarter. Big third down here for both teams. Shotgun formation for Knox. He's got Burt to his right and four receivers. Knox rolls right, throws it over the hands of his intended target, Logan Scott, incomplete and fourth down. And Glen Elk will have to bring out the punting unit and give it right back to the Panthers. Who are going to look to start imposing their will in the trenches the rest of the way to wear out that defensive front for Glen Oak. 4.33 remaining here in the third quarter. Panthers awaiting the punt as they lead Glen Oak 21-17. Cameron Gill back deep. High spiraling punt fielded at the 47. Out to the 50 across into Glen Oak territory and driven down at the Glen Oak 45 yard line and that's where the Panthers will start this drive already on the Golden Eagles side of the 50. go. Basham under center with Church in the backfield. Takes the snap and hands it off to Church straight up the middle. And he's going to fight all the way down to the 30 and he's going to keep going and going down to the 25 yard line as he carried half of that defense with him. And that's going to be first and 10 Perry on the Glen Oak 25. That's a big boy run there by DeAndre Church on first down. Four minutes to go here in the third quarter. Gotta keep Basham under center. Takes a snap, hands it off to Church again, and this time he'll get nowhere. Might have even lost a yard. It's going to bring it up second down. They're going to say no gain from the 25-yard line. So it'll be second and 10. 3.30 remaining here in the third quarter. Perry up 21-17, marching again. Basham under center, takes the snap. This time he's going to hand it off to Sam Thompson who goes right off tackle down to the 20-yard line before he is brought down to bring up third down and five. Three minutes to go here in the third quarter as the clock is a-moving. Time they're going to put Basham in the shotgun. Church to his right. Sam Thompson out wide right. Thompson comes around for the reverse and they flip it to Thompson. And Glen Oak snipped that one out from the jump as he's tackled for a loss. And McNeil was in on that one as he disrupted that entire play. So that's going to bring up fourth and eight from the 23 yard line. We'll see what they want to do here. Looks like they're going to try to kick the field goal here to get the points. So we're approaching two minutes left here in the third quarter. Basham lined up for the field goal attempt. It's down. It's up. He's got plenty of leg. And it is good as the Panthers now lead 24-17 with a minute 52 remaining here in the third quarter. So 
So 152 remaining here in the third quarter. Perry leads Glen Oak 24 to 17. Great field goal by Carson Basham. <laughs> Makes it a touchdown and an extra point lead now. So Glen Oak has to put the ball in the end zone just to tie it now, instead of taking the lead every time on the overlap. We'll see if Glen Oak can get something going as Perry has made nice adjustments in the second half other than the one touchdown pass to Michael Davis. Basham boots it off. And it looks like it's going to bounce and go into the end zone for a touchback. So Glen Oak will start from their own 20-yard line. And more from Hoover. As like I said, if I mentioned at halftime, Robbie Smart broke a school record with a 50-yard field goal right before half. But now Hoover's up 38-0 in the third quarter. And it was all bad from the start for Jackson as Geisinger started the game throwing a pick six. There goes Knox and company. Actually, they wildcat it straight to Avante Burt, who goes up the left side for about a two-yard gain to bring up second down and eight from the 22-yard line. So minute 30 to go here in the third. 24-17 Perry on top of Glen Oak. Second and seven from their own 23-yard line. Knox back in the shotgun. Burt right behind him. They fake the handoff to Burt and he rolls right. Looking downfield, puts the ball in the air complete. Out to the 50-yard line, Logan Scott for a Glen Oak first down. As they move into Perry territory on the Perry 46-yard line. First and 10 with a minute eight to go. They break the huddle. Isaiah Knox in the shotgun with Burt right behind him in the backfield. Takes the snap, hands it off to Burt who goes up the left side. Gains about three yards before he's brought down. Under a minute to play. Going to be a four-yard gain there. Second and six for Glen Oak on the Perry 42-yard line. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. They hand it off to Burt. Goes up the left side and gains probably another yard to bring up third and five. 16 seconds to go here in the third quarter. We'll see if either team gets another snap off. And it doesn't look like they're going to. So that's going to end the third quarter with the Perry Panthers leading the Glen Oak Golden Eagles 24 to 17. This is high school football brought to you by Sarshon Ford on Q92. At Sarda, we make safety a priority. We constantly clean and sanitize our vehicles and transit centers. We mask up, we social distance, and we accept Easy Fare, the contactless, safe way to pay. That's why people use Sarda's fixed route service more than 1.2 million times in the past year, and why you can trust us to protect you every time you ride. Wherever life takes you today, ride Sarda, the safe, affordable, convenient way to travel across Stark County and beyond. In the last year, we've spent a lot more time at home. Whether working remotely or even working out, we've found a way to keep up. If the last year's shown us anything, it's that being at home together and taking care of our families is the most important thing. That's why our... 
furniture, and even our mattresses make all the difference. So when it's time to buy something new, get service on something you own, or just explore your options, head to Grove because they've got a local showroom full of options. Everything you need to take care of your family, visit Grove, where it always feels like home. Come see us at Grove, where it always feels like home. Back here for the start of the fourth quarter, third and five from the Perry 41-yard line. Glenno going right to left. Knocks in the shotgun, hands it off to Vontae Bird, who goes right. Breaks one tackle, cuts it back up the middle before he's about a yard short to bring up fourth and one. So fourth and one from the 37 yard line of Perry. Big fourth down here for Glen Oak as they're trailing by a touchdown. They're gonna put that stacked eye down there. Put Knox under center. He's gonna hand it off and he's tripped up. Burt trips over his own lineman. And he's two yards short and Perry's gonna take over. Asian Burt couldn't even get his second stride going as he tripped on his offensive lineman who was blown up by the Perry defense. We're 11 17 remaining in the ball game. Big stop by the Panthers. They'll take over from their own 38. So Basham under center, Church in the backfield. Hart shorn in motion, they hand it off to Church. He tries to go straight up the middle, breaks one tackle. He's fighting just to get back to the line of scrimmage. He's gonna bring up second down and 11 as he loses a yard. 11 minutes to go in the ball game. Ten forty-five remaining. Basham under center. Got a receiver out wide right. Put a man in motion. Flag on the play. Looks like we're going to have a see if it's an illegal shift or a false start here on the Panthers. Dead ball. False start. False start on the Panthers will knock them back five yards. Second and 16 from their own 32 yard line. <laughs> 10 35 to go in the ball game. Panthers up 24 17. Both teams looking for their first league win of the year and to end the regular season on a positive note. Basham will stay under center. Takes the snap, hands it off again to Hartshorn, goes up the middle, he's buried under. And we got a Perry Panther down, flat on his face, in a little bit of pain. So they're gonna call an injury timeout, and as they tend to him, oh wait, he's gonna try to get up here and we'll see what they say here. So while they tend to him, we'll step away. This is high school football brought to you by Sarshone Ford on Q92. Felden Village Mall is proud to partner with Q92 to announce the player of the game for the 2021 Stark County High School football season. Felden Village Mall, the premier shopping destination located in the hub of Eastern Ohio, boasts over 120 specialty shops and restaurants. Felden Village Mall, where you will find all of this year's latest fall styles and sales. And make sure to visit the Belden Village Mall website event page as we start to ramp up signature community events that will take place throughout the year inside the mall. 
Since 1967, Copeland Oaks has been a community for active adults that are age 55 and over, seeking an engaging, vibrant place to call home. As one of the Midwest's most sought-after living communities, we provide a scenic, friendly environment filled with activities and services that focus on physical and mental well-being. Take a swim in our aquatic center, take a walk on our scenic nature trail, or play a round of golf. It's all included. To schedule your personal tour, Call 1-800-222-4640 or visit us at copelandoaks.com. You're listening to High School Football presented by Sarshone Ford, streaming live at q92radiosports.com. All right, back here. Third and 11 from their own 37-yard line. 10.04 remaining. Perry up 24-17. With the football going left to right. Basham. Takes the handoff and gives it to Ruiz, who goes up the right side, back up the middle. And that's going to bring up fourth down and four from their own 44-yard line. And Slates will change his mind and bring out the punting unit. 9-27 and counting left in the ball game. Back deep is Hunter for Glen Oak. High snap, Basham gets it off. That's gonna be a fair catch at the 23 yard line for the Golden Eagles with 9.07 to play. That one was close as Glen Oak was coming after it, but Carson Basham got it off. So Glen Oak will get another opportunity to tie this one up, put some points on the board. On Glen Oak, they're first. So here comes Knox. In the shotgun with Burt behind him. He's got two receivers to his right, one to his left. Knox takes the snap, fakes the handoff to Burt, and he's going to roll right, and he's going to keep it. He's out to the 30, to the 33, and jumps out of bounds around the first down marker. We'll see if they give him the spot and move the chains. Oh, they're going to call him about a yard short. It'll be second and one from the 33-yard line. Under nine minutes to play in the ball game. Comes Knox out of the huddle. Takes the snap and hands it off to Burt, who goes up the right side, breaks one tackle, gets the first down, and he's driven out of bounds at the 38-yard line. It's going to be first and 10 Golden Eagles. Knox in the shotgun, fake handoff. Knox is gonna run it around the right side and he's gonna be twisted around and thrown to the ground there after about one yard. Bring up second and 10. They did not give him the forward progress, so it's second and 10 from their own 38 yard line. Knox and Burt stick it out in the backfield. Under eight to play. Drops back to pass. Knox takes off. To 
He faked the pass and then took off running, and he gets the first down as he's out to his own 49-yard line. That'll move the chains. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Knox takes the snap and drops back to pass. Looking around, puts the ball over the middle, complete to uh, incomplete, in and out of the hands of Avante Burt, who came out of the backfield. So that brings up second and 10 for Glen Oak from their own 49 yard line. 7 12 remaining in the ball game. Panthers still lead 24 17. Get the football, let's go! Knox takes the snap and gives it to Burt. Tries to go to the left side, nothing doing, gains a yard. It's going to bring up third and nine as we go under seven minutes to play in the ball game. Third and eight, they're going to give, it, give him an extra yard there, which moves them into Perry territory on the Perry side of the 50-yard line. Shotgun formation for Knox. Burt in the backfield, two receivers to the right, two to the left. Takes the snap and drops back to pass. Knox looking, looking left. Hits his intended target, Hunter. But he stopped right where he caught the ball and he's gonna be about two yards short. And it's gonna bring up fourth down. Gonna bring up uh, fourth down and one from the 42-yard line of Perry. We're approaching six minutes to play in the ball game and Glen Oak's gonna go for it. And again, it's Knox in the shotgun and Avante Burt in the backfield. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Knox takes the snap, fakes the handoff, rolls right. He's gonna take off himself. He's got the first down before he's drilled at the 38 yard line of Perry, but it'll move the chains for the Golden Eagles. 544 remaining. Glen Oak driving, they need a touchdown and an extra point to tie the ball game. Knox back in the shotgun, takes the snap, hands it off to Burt, goes up the right side, gains two yards, and then he's hit back. He's gonna bring up second down and long, see how many yards they give him. Looks like they gave him two, so it's gonna be second and eight. From the 36 yard line, we're under five minutes to play in the ball game. Again, shotgun formation. This time, Burt's going to be to the right. Knox hands it off to Burt, who can't break free, and he might have even lost a yard there. That's going to bring up third and long. They're going to say no gain there, so it'll be third and eight from the 36. Clock still moving. Big third down here, four down territory, so Glen Oak will most likely go for it on fourth down regardless. Shotgun formation for Knox. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Drops back to pass, looking right, puts the ball in the air. Just out of the outstretched arm of a wide open Logan Scott. Isaiah Knox just missed him. He had his receiver, but couldn't put it on the button. And that brings up fourth and eight with 3.53 to go.
Well, it's officially rivalry week as there's a big fight between Tuslaw and Fairless now, and there's going to be some ejections. So we've officially reached rivalry week as Knox drops back the pass, whips it across the left side complete, and gives the Glen Oak Golden Eagles life as they get it to Michael Davis for a first and 10. 3.47 to go. Lake trying to make a comeback on the Sarda scoreboard as they were down 21 to nothing. And now they only trail Green 21 to 14. So it's going to be first and 10 from the Perry 23 yard line for Glen Oak. New set of downs. They're going to keep Knox in the shotgun. Two receivers to the right. They got Avante Bird in the backfield right behind Knox. Knox takes the snap and hands it off to Burt. Burt's going to run out the right side. Can he get the corner? No, he cannot as he's driven out of bounds at the 20-yard line. It's about a three-yard gain. And it's a final over at Hoover as the Vikings defeat the Jackson Polar Bears 38-7 and win the Federal League outright. So congratulations to the Hoover Vikings. And now second and seven for Glen Oak. Five wide, Knox takes the snap, drops back to pass, looking around, dancing around, and he just runs it out of bounds and he actually loses a yard. It's gonna be third down now, 20 yard line. 3.26 remaining in the ball game. It's going to be another four down territory situation, so you don't need all seven back. Knox in the shotgun. He's going to offset Burt. Four receivers out wide. Takes a snap and drops back to pass. Looking downfield, whips it to the left. Incomplete passes. Perry jumped the route, almost intercepted by Christian, but he dropped the pass to bring up fourth and seven from the 20 yard line. And Glen Oak has to go for it with 319 to play in the ball game. Here's Knox in the shotgun, four receivers, drops back to pass, fourth down, puts the ball in the air, complete over the middle and down to the three yard line, which will move the chains and give the Eagles a first and goal. Inside the Stratton Chevrolet red zone yet again. 3.13 to go. First and goal from the three yard line. Here goes Knox under center, power eye. Hands it off to Burt, weaves his way through and again trips on a lineman's foot. I don't think he got anything there. Three minutes to play in the ball game. Second and goal from the three. We go another stacked eye under center. Knox gives it to Bird again. Weaves his way through, pushes his way through, and he's in for the touchdown. Glen Oak back in the end zone again, which makes it 23 24 and an extra point away from another tie ball game. Here comes the extra point.
It's up. And it is good. Tie ball game here in Perry. 24 all with 2.33 left. Plenty of time left as Perry has all three timeouts. Glen Oak ready to kick it back. Two guys back deep for Perry. Twenty-four all. Comes the ensuing kickoff. It's gonna be through the back of the end zone. And Perry will start from their own 20-yard line. 233 remaining in the ball game. All tied up at 24. Both of these teams. Want to finish their regular season with a victory. So here comes Basham, who's done a great job of orchestrating this team, both on offense and special teams here tonight. See if he can do it one more time, as he's going to be under center. Takes the snap, hands it off to Hartshorn. And I don't think he got anywhere. And are they going to say it's a fumble? Glen Oak says they have it. And they're going to say that they stopped the forward progress at the 20 yard line. And Glen Oak, Scott Garcia runs out to call a timeout. So we'll step away. This is high school football brought to you by Sarshon Ford on Q92. Belden Village Mall is proud to partner with Q92 to announce the player of the game for the 2021 Stark County High School football season. Belden Village Mall, the premier shopping destination located in the hub of Eastern Ohio, boasts over 120 specialty shops and restaurants. Belden Village Mall, where you will find all of this year's latest fall styles and sales. And make sure to visit the Belden Village Mall website event page as we start to ramp up signature community events that will take place throughout the year inside the mall. You're listening to High School Football presented by Sarshone Ford streaming live at Q92RadioSports.com. There we go. Glen Oak done with their time out there as it was all about preserving clock. Especially when they stopped Perry for no gain. So it's going to be second and ten from their own 20-yard line for the Panthers. Basham goes under center, hands it off to Thompson, who spin move, breaks another tackle as he fights through and gets out to the 25-yard line, which is going to bring up third and five. And that's going to be another Glen Oak timeout. Step away again. High school football brought to you by Sarshone Ford on Q92. In the last year, we've spent a lot more time at home. Whether working remotely or even working out, we've found a way to keep up. If the last year's shown us anything, it's that being at home together and taking care of our families is the most important thing. That's why our appliances, furniture, and even our mattresses make all the difference. So when it's time to buy something new, get service on something you own, or just explore your options, head to Grove because they've got a local showroom full of options. Everything you need to take care of your family. Visit Grow, where it always feels like home. Come see us at Grow, where it always feels like home. 
You're listening to High School Football, presented by Sarshone Ford, streaming live at Q92RadioSports.com. There we go again. Third and five from their own 25-yard line, 2-10 remaining. Tie ball game. Basham in the shotgun. He's got Church to his right, receiver to the right. Basham's going to keep it himself and run it right. Cuts back and doesn't get anywhere. And that's going to bring up fourth down for the Golden Eagles. As they stopped Perry for no gain. And we'll see what the Panthers decide to do. We're going to get another timeout here. Leno calls their final timeout. We'll step away again. We'll be back after this. Omni Express Walk-In Clinic is here for you day and night, and even on Saturday with new extended hours. Turn your orthopedic ouch into an ah. The Walk-In Clinic is open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Saturday. No appointment needed. Come to Omni Express first for fast, expert care. Located at Omni Orthopedics, 4760 Belpar Street in Belton Village. Visit OmniOrtho.com or call 330-492-9200. You're listening to High School Football, presented by Sarshon Ford, streaming live at Q92RadioSports.com. Fourth and four, and Basham backed up for the punt. Logan Scott back deep for Glen Oak. Basham gets the punt off, fielded at the 40 by Scott. Goes right and gets it out to about the 47-yard line. And that's where Glen Oak will take over. They have no timeouts left, but 151 to go. Tied up 24 all. Glen Oak with a chance to take the lead and win the ball game. It's all about being careful with the football. Knox and Burt in the backfield, four receivers out wide. Drops back to pass, gets rid of it. Misses his intended target low, Logan Scott, so it's gonna be second and 10. 147 to go. You gotta think that they're gonna try at least one time to go over the top to Michael Davis like they did to start the second half. goes the snap they hand it off to Burt who goes straight up the right side and we got a flag on the play as he got the first down but that one looks like it's coming back as it's going to be holding on the Golden Eagles great run by Avante Burt but he was yard sprung penalty free from, the from spot an illegal of the foul. hold Replay so that's going to bring him down. back in a minute 38 to go in the ball game And it would only be fitting. We got to start thinking about overtime here. Knox in the shotgun. Two receivers to his right, one to his left. Drops back to pass. Looking left, scrambling left. Puts the ball over the middle in the air. Nobody home. It's now going to be third and 11 from their own 46 yard line. A minute 25 to go. Glen Oak out of timeouts. Perry has all three of theirs. Knox and company break the huddle. Stay in the shotgun. Four receivers. Burt in the backfield, offset. Knox takes the snap and drops back to pass. He's looking left, looking right. Now he's scrambling left and he's gonna try to take off. He's got nowhere to go, he reverses field. Looking downfield again, asking for receivers to come back to the ball and he throws it into the turf. Short of Avante Burt to bring up fourth and 11 with 1-11. 
to go in regulation. So Glen Oak will bring on the punting unit. And we'll get to see Cameron Gill back deep for the Panthers. Snaps the punt off the side of his foot, and it's going to take a Golden Eagle bounce, and it's just going to keep on rolling inside the 10, inside and down at the five-yard line. So 58 seconds to go in this one. It's tied up at 24, and it would really only be fitting after a season like this that Perry enter their fifth game of the season into overtime if nothing catastrophic for either team happens here. So we'll see what Perry decides to do in the shadow of their own end zone. They got Basham in the shotgun. Takes the snap, Basham's gonna run it. Up the middle he goes and he gets it out to the nine before he's brought down. Going to say the 10, so it'll be second. No, nope. going to be second and six after a four yard gain. They're just letting that clock roll. Fairless on top of Tuslaw, 47 to 12. Slates is content with running this thing all the way down and living in overtime for the fifth time this season. Perry runs to the line. And this time the Panthers will call a timeout with seven seconds to go. We'll step away. This is high school football brought to you by Sarshon Ford on Q92. Stark County, have you heard? The Birdhouse Deli is the word. The Birdhouse Deli has breakfast and hot lunch features every day, along with fresh salads, subs, wraps, and desserts. Come see the vinyl room with timeless vinyl record album covers displayed throughout and the Pepperland Porch, a tribute to the Beatles painted by local artists. Come for the art and decor, stay for the fresh homemade food. The Birdhouse is located off Route 30 at Raff Road at 2103 Gambrenis Road. The Birdhouse is the word. <laughs> You're listening to High School Football, presented by Sarshone Ford, streaming live at Q92RadioSports.com. There we go. Basham under center. Going to take the snap, and he's actually going to take a knee, and we'll take it to overtime. So we'll step away, and when we come back, we will have the fifth overtime game of the season for the Perry Panthers. And we're checking in with Joe at the Sarshone Ford family of dealerships in Alliance, Waynesburg, and Randolph. So, Joe, when you have a big family of dealerships like that, that means you have great selection. And that's especially true right now on your selection of Ford F-150s. The shortage is still out there, but not here at Sarshone Ford. We have the best selection around of F-150s on ground, ready to sell, and like always, the best trade-in values around. Let's get that new vehicle on its way to your driveway. Get your own at Sarshone. At Sarda, we make safety a priority. We constantly clean and sanitize our vehicles and transit centers. We mask up, we social distance, and we accept Easy Fare, the contactless, safe way to pay. That's why people use Sarda's fixed route service more than 1.2 million times in the past year, and why you can trust us to protect you every time you ride. Wherever life takes you today, ride Sarda, the safe, affordable, convenient way to travel across Stark County and beyond. Hey, this is Dirk Stratton from Stratton Chevrolet in Beloit, Ohio. My family has been servicing and selling Chevy since 1928. I want to invite you to visit us at Stratton Chevrolet, where you'll find a great selection of Chevy trucks, cars, and versatile SUVs. We pride ourselves in serving you beyond the sale. Customer satisfaction always has been and always will be our main goal. Come visit us at the corner of Route 14 and 534 in Beloit and at strattonchevrolet.com. Stratton Chevrolet, your no-dock fee dealer. Selling Chevys and making friends since 1928. 
Omni Express Walk-In Clinic is here for you day and night, and even on Saturday with new extended hours. Turn your orthopedic ouch into an awe. The Walk-In Clinic is open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Saturday. No appointment needed. Come to Omni Express first for fast, expert care. Located at Omni Orthopedics, 4760 Belpar Street in Belton Village. Visit OmniOrtho.com or call 330-492-9200. You're listening to High School Football, presented by Sarshon Ford, streaming live at Q92RadioSports.com. Back here at Keith Wakefield Stadium in Perry as we are headed to overtime as the Perry Panthers and the Glen Oak Golden Eagles are tied at 24. This is the fourth, no, the fifth overtime game for the Perry Panthers this year. Their first three weeks went to overtime. And last week they went to overtime. Two overtime games at home, two overtime games on the road. And now this will be the third one at home. They are one in four in overtime games this season. They opened the season in the Battle of 13th Street, losing to Central Catholic at Central. 28-26, and then in week two they were home where they defeated Akron East 21-20 in overtime. Week three they stayed home for a loss to North Royalton 21-20 also in overtime. And then like I just mentioned, last week in week nine they were in Uniontown at Lake where they gave Lake everything that they could handle in a 28-27 loss to the Blue Streaks in double overtime. So... We will, right now they're out there doing the, the toss of it all. Where is, where is he? Is he close? And we'll see who gets what and when. And it looks like we'll know here in a few minutes. Again, I want to thank you all for spending your Friday night with me here on Q92. And now here comes the student section running along the side of the field. And it looks like Perry will start with the football. going from right to left. And they'll start on the Glen Oak 20 yard line. Here we go. Basham under center. DeAndre Church in the backfield. Takes the snap. Hands it off to Hartshorn, he's going to be stopped for no gain as he tries to go left off tackle, and it's going to be second and 10 from the 20. No gain on the play, brings up second down and 10. Here's Basham. Takes the snap, hands it off to Church, who goes straight up the middle, gains a yard, and then he's gang tackled and driven back. Gonna bring up third down and eight as he gave, gained two yards there on that carry. Gain of two on the play brings up third down and eight. Basham back under center. Thompson in motion. Basham's going to drop back the pass. He's going to dump it up over the top, over the middle. 
And they're going to throw flags out on the play as he was double covered and got bailed out because neither defender turned around to play the football. He was double covered. They didn't even need to hold on to him. Let's confirm that that's what the call is going to be. Pass interference, defense number one. Yep, and it's going to be pass interference. Half the distance on the to the goal. That results in a it first on down. McNeil. Automatic first down for the Panthers. So it's going to be first and goal from the nine for the Panthers. Basham in the shotgun. Takes the snap and he's going to take it himself. And he gets nowhere as Glen Oak sniffed that out from the get go. He was in on that one. Shot in there like a cannon, Austin Potter on the play there. And now he's slow to get up. So, I'm going to be second and goal from the nine as there was no gain. Potter's going to get off under his own power. Break the huddle and Basham goes back under center. Basham takes the snap, gets it to Hartshorn who goes right and he gets nowhere as Glen Oak right now is living in the Perry backfield. Third and 13 as they Drove the Panthers back to their own 13 or to the 13 yard line. Shotgun formation. Church to the right. Sam Thompson out wide left. They hand it off to Church who goes up the left. And then he's going to be piled over. And that's going to bring up fourth down for the Panthers. And they're going to bring in the field goal unit to try to get points on the board. Down, it's up, and he missed it to the left. So Glen Oak now with a chance to win the ball game. As they're now going to get it on the 20 yard line. Here comes Knox and company back out. Avante Burt with him. He's going to have two receivers to his right. He's going to stay in the shotgun and keep Burt right behind him. Knox takes the snap and hands it off to Burt. Goes right, gets to the right sideline, tries to cut the corner, spin move down to the 10 yard line. Going to bring up, see if they give him the spot. And it does. It's going to move him down. First down from the 10. It's going to be first and goal. Comes Glen Oak with a chance to win the ball game on this possession. Two receivers to the right again. Knox takes the snap, hands it off to Burt. Goes wide right again, and this time he gets thrown out of bounds. 
Doesn't look like he gained anything there. If they do, they'll give him a yard, maybe. Nothing. It's going to be second and ten. Perry and Glen Oak knotted up at 24. We're in overtime. Perry's fifth one of the season. Knox in the shotgun. Got Avante Burt behind him in the backfield and two receivers to his right. Takes the snap again to Burt and again to the right and Perry's all over it. And again, no gain. Third and 10. It almost looks as if Glen Oak is content to run the same play and barring a mistake, just try to kick the field goal for the victory. Here we go again. Same formation for the Golden Eagles. Knox takes the snap, and again, Burt up the right side. This time maybe gains a yard or two, but that's going to bring up fourth and eight. And here comes the field goal unit for the Golden Eagles. Here we go. Glen Oak lining up for the field goal and the win. And Perry's going to call a timeout. Try to ice him. It's the one and only timeout for Perry, and we'll step away. We'll be back after this. At Mears Nissan, the goal is to offer quality vehicles and excellent customer services along with their must-see guarantee. With must-see pricing, what you see is what you pay. With must-see convenience, see how easy it is to shop with Mears Connected. With must-see service, discover why so many drivers trust their factory-trained technician. With must-see financing, the Mears Nissan team does whatever it takes to help you drive home. Mears Nissan is located at 4825 Tuscarora Street West, so Stop by today or shop online at MearsNissan.com. Back here as both teams come out of the timeouts and Glen Oaks lined up and ready to kick this thing. There's a snap. It's down, it's up, and it is good. And Glen Oak walks off with a field goal to win it, 27-24. In overtime, again. So that's going to finish it up here. We're going to step away for a commercial break. When we come back, we'll have our post-game show where we'll check out the Sarda scoreboard, look around at the finals around the other games in Stark County, and uh, have our final analysis here before we sign off. This is high school football brought to you by Sarshon Ford on Q92. And we're checking in with Joe at the Sarshone Ford family of dealerships in Alliance, Waynesburg, and Randolph. So, Joe, when you have a big family of dealerships like that, that means you have great selection. And that's especially true right now on your selection of Ford F-150s. The shortage is still out there, but not here at Sarshone Ford. We have the best selection around of F-150s on ground, ready to sell, and like always, the best trade-in values around. Let's get that new vehicle on its way to your driveway. Get your own at Sarshone. At Sarda, we make safety a priority. We constantly clean and sanitize our vehicles and transit centers. We mask up, we social distance, and we accept Easy Fare, the contactless, safe way to pay. That's why people use Sarda's fixed route service more than 1.2 million times in the past year, and why you can trust us to protect you every time you ride. Wherever life takes you today, ride Sarda, the safe, affordable, convenient way to travel across Stark County and beyond. Omni Express Walk-In Clinic is here for you day and night, and even on Saturday with new extended hours. Turn your orthopedic ouch into an awe. 
The walk-in clinic is open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Saturday. No appointment needed. Come to Omni Express first for fast expert care. Located at Omni Orthopedics, 4760 Belpar Street, Village. Visit com or call 330-200. Tired of the food? Consider Aunt Allie's catering. Aunt Allie fills catering seven days a week. Need part Aunt Allie's catering delivers. Literally. We'll deliver or you can pick it up. Main courses, pasta, side salads. How about oven fried chicken tenders with dipping sauces? Or Italian sausage and peppers with a side of cheesy potatoes. Mmm. Aunt Allie's catering. Check them out online at AuntAllie'sCatering.com or call the Birdhouse Deli at 479-1671. Aunt Allie's Catering.